In this lesson, we'll take a look at how we can start to create some really, really interesting effects using Mo instances. So in this particular example, I have a cloner object that has been set up with a cube. So as we start to scrub through this, you can see I've actually done some uh, basic keyframe animation on this cloner. So I've animated things like the uh, actual radius, so that way these uh, cubes actually start to grow smaller, or start to kind of shrink inward through time, so that radius starts to decrease. I've also started to animate things like the offset, so that way these cubes actually spin around, and things like that. So what I would like to do is create a situation where these cubes, as they're moving through space and moving through time, are actually leaving duplicates or copies of themselves behind, so we can actually start to get this kind of a neat little draw-on uh, creation effect of all these different cubes being created through time. Well, a perfect tool for that is called the Mo Instance. So this can be found underneath MoGraph and Mo Instance. Now, earlier versions of Cinema 4D also referred to this as just an instance object. So in my case, I'm just going to drop in this Mo Instance. Now, the method in which we use this Mo Instance is a little bit different. Uh, so what we first need to do is, in our object reference, we want to plug in the actual object that we want to instance. In my case, it's actually going to be this cube. So in my Mo Instance, I'll take this cube and drop that into my object. All right, and now what I actually need to do is take this Mo Instance and make that a child of my cloner. So now if I rewind and play back, you can see that it is actually uh, remembering where this cube was at the previous frames. It is actually giving us uh, this really, really neat kind of draw on effect. So if we go into the Mo instance, we actually have a history depth. Now this is basically telling us how many frames of history to remember. So if I were to maybe set this to only something like four frames, you can see it just remembers this little span of time. But if I were to dial this up, we can actually see that we have uh, a lot more history that's being remembered. And we can really set this up uh, however we want. So again, you can start to see some uh, really, really interesting effects that we can start to create with this. And we can even start to introduce things like effectors into this. So if I were to go to my Mo instance object, we can see we actually do have an area for effectors. So just for the sake of demonstration, I can drop in something like uh, maybe a step effector. So this is actually good for uh, creating variations in movement through time. So if I were to play this through, we can actually see that with this step effector, we're actually uh, starting to change the scale of this object through time. Now in my case, if we wanted to, we could maybe dial that back down. So we can bring this scale down. Again, rewind. And we can start to see again how uh, through time, we can start to see some definite changes in uh, the scale. And maybe also start to introduce things like rotation, if that's uh, something that we wanted to create and uh, change through time. So we can actually have these little guys uh, start to rotate and alter themselves as we start to move through time and through space. So some, again, really, really neat things that we can start to do with this Mo instance. Now, here's uh, sort of the thing that you want to keep in mind whenever working with the Mo instance, and that is uh, when it comes to rendering, uh, we can start to wind up with some uh, complications. So for example, if I were to just simply render this within my viewport, just pressing Control R on my keyboard, we can see that this should render out uh, pretty much as we would expect. So all the shadows, any lights that I have in my scene, everything works just fine with the Mo instance in this case. Now, if I were to come in and actually try to render this through my picture viewer, so uh, I would press Shift R on my keyboard to render this out, you can see that uh, we don't wind up with that same situation. We can see the individual cubes, but we can't see these individual uh, spindly little arms that we should be seeing. So the problem when it comes to rendering these Mo instances is that uh, because these are all based on time, your renderer needs to know all of this information that has been stored. Well, while this can be seen in the viewport, once that actually gets passed over into the render, that information is not present. So we have a couple of options. If we were actually going to render out some kind of an animation, if we were to actually render out our entire sequence from the very beginning, we should actually see that everything should render out uh, pretty well. Now again, if I were to uh, maybe go into my render settings, so uh, press Control B on my keyboard, 
And let's say I maybe set my time range to all frames. And again, press Shift R to render this out. You can see that once the sequence is finished rendering out, that as long as I render the entire thing from the very beginning, it should render out just fine. All right, we can see that. However, what if I just wanted to uh, render one particular frame into my picture viewer, but not necessarily have to worry about rendering everything leading up to it, because I really don't want to have to render all of this just to get that one nice little image. So to fix that, we need to use basically a cache. So with a cache, what we can do is write out all of this information to memory, and then that information can be accessed at any time. So what I can do is select my cloner, in this case, that's the one with the Mo instance connected to it. Let's go to Tags. We'll go to MoGraph Tags, and we'll add a MoGraph cache. Okay, so that's this little uh, film strip icon here, and you can see right now it's set to red, which means that right now there is no cache that exists. So what I can do is just go back to uh, the beginning, and we can uh, bake out an entire sequence, or maybe if we just want to bake certain frames, we can define those here. If this is turned off, it will actually go ahead and bake my entire timeline. So now if I come in and bake, you can see now it's set to green, which means now a cache exists, and we can see how much room or how much uh, space that cache is taking up. Okay, and now it's set to use cache, which it will do automatically. So now if I come in and play this through, we should be able to uh, actually see this. The problem, though, is that if I were to go back to my render settings, again, press Control b on my keyboard, and if I set this back to maybe just current frame, right, and then press Shift-R to render this into my picture viewer, you can see it still doesn't recognize this cache. It still is not picking up on it the way that it should. So here's uh, kind of a little thing that you're going to have to do, and this is completely normal. Um, what we have to do in order for this cache to actually be properly read is we actually need to take our cloner or whatever uh, object this cache is connected to and just very simply give it some kind of a dynamics tag. All right. Now, as long as this tag is present, that's all that we need. So we can actually take this tag and completely disable it. So it's there, but it's really not having any kind of an effect whatsoever. But having this tag present will now force this cache to be read properly. So now, if I were to come through and play this, and again, Shift-R to render this into my picture viewer, now you can see the cache has been read properly, and now I can render just the frame that I want without having to worry about rendering everything else as well. Now, once you have this cache built, that can sometimes lead to some complications and some problems if you, uh, for instance, wanted to go back and modify your cube. Uh, because we already have this information cached, sometimes that information, if we go back and make those changes, won't get fed back in. So occasionally, let's say if we wanted to go back and make changes to our cube or changes to the cloner, uh, once we make those changes, we're probably going to have to go back to the cache, make sure we clear that, and then rebake it again. So again, that way we can just make sure that any new changes get fed back into that cache, and now, again, those can be rendered properly. So that's a look at how we can start to create some of these really, really interesting, very artistic effects using the Mo instance.